This lesson is on types of memory. So we're going to talk about what memory is and we're going to talk about the different types of memory and their roles in cognition and experience in life. Let's first talk about what memory is. Memory is the faculty or ability to retain information for processing and utilization with a subset of relevant required information becoming stored for future use. And if we were to really look at memory as a whole, memory really defines who a person is, what a person knows, understands, and can do. So who we are and what we know is based on what we remember from the past. So what we're going to talk about in this lesson is the following types of memory. The first one is sensory memory. Sensory memory is an initial sensory experience of the world, and it has a very limited duration. We're going to then move on to short-term memory, which has a short duration and a very small storage capacity. And we get more in detail as to what working memory is. And then we're going to look at long-term memory. Long-term memory has long-term storage, and it has a very large storage capacity. And long-term memory gets split up into two types of memory, explicit memory and implicit memory. We're going to talk about each of those in more detail later on in this lesson. Let's first talk about sensory memory. So sensory memory is essentially the original form of sensory information that is very briefly retained. So if we were to look at an object, for instance, so there is essentially a very brief original form of that information of that object that we're seeing. So an example is when light is moved around very quickly. So if someone has a light stick and they move it around very quickly, we see that it looks continuous, although it is not. And the continuity of that light that we see is due to that very brief retention of sensory information. Now, this retention is very brief. It lasts only a fraction of a second. So perhaps not all sensory information is attended to, but the Sensory information that is attended to can be brought into conscious awareness and utilized for a variety of processes and or stored for later use. So it can be brought in to be utilized in short-term memory or working memory. And then furthermore, it may be stored for long-term use in our long-term memory. Now let's move on to short-term memory or working memory. So short-term or working memory is memory that is temporarily stored and actively utilized. So this memory is going to be readily accessible. Oftentimes the memory is only going to last for 20 to 30 seconds, especially if it's unrehearsed. So for instance, if you have a string of digits in your mind, if you were to see it and think about it and then don't think about it, that memory oftentimes may last up to 20 to 30 seconds, unless you were to rehearse those numbers over and over again in your mind. So that is the duration of short-term memory. If you were to remember it later and bring it to conscious awareness, say hours later, then we would consider that to be in long-term memory. So this is what we would call short-term memory. It lasts only 20 to 30 seconds. Oftentimes this short-term memory system is going to be actively utilized. It's utilized for a variety of processes, problem solving, executive functioning. And because this short-term memory is actively utilized, we call it working memory. And the working memory storage has a particular capacity. Most times it's going to be anywhere from five to nine items. So this is going to be average working memory storage capacity for an average person. So it's five to nine items, units, or slots in your memory. So a way to actually think about this is that if you were to have a set of digits, a set of random digits in your mind, you can perhaps remember five of them or even up to nine of them. After that, it's very difficult to retain and remember correctly. But if there is a particular set of numbers, for instance, one, two, three, six, five, four, if you were presented with those set of numbers, although it's six items or six numbers, because there is a discernible pattern to those numbers, you can actually take that information and put it into chunks and remember it. So you can remember one, two, three as one chunk and six, five, four as another chunk or a slot. So by doing that, you can actually increase the amount of information in your working memory storage. So by chunking or putting things into groups, that can actually help you remember more. So oftentimes individuals often are going to do that. But even doing that, if you were to have nine groups of items, that is going to oftentimes going to be the maximum capacity. So there's only a finite number of slots in your working memory to be used. And the way to remember the working memory storage capacity from five to nine items 
is the mnemonic magic number seven plus or minus two. So seven minus two would be five, plus two would be nine. So seven plus or minus two. And I mentioned this before, but working memory, because it's actively utilized, it's important in many different functions in life. It's important in planning, it's important in learning, and it's important in problem solving. So working memory is very important for many functions in day-to-day -day life. Now, if certain information in short-term memory is put into long-term storage, which is oftentimes performed by the hippocampus, which consolidates this information into the long-term storage, if it's in long-term storage, we then have long-term memory. Now, there are different types of long-term memory we're gonna talk about here as well. We're first gonna talk about explicit memory. So I mentioned before there's explicit memory and implicit memory. Explicit memory is a type of long-term memory that is also known as declarative memory. So you can remember this by thinking of, you can declare this type of information. And this is memory that is consciously recalled. So you can actually bring it to conscious awareness and declare it. There are actually two types of explicit memory. There's something called semantic memory, and there is another type called episodic memory. So let's first talk about semantic memory. Semantic memory is memory regarding facts and knowledge. It's oftentimes going to be discrete pieces of information. And some examples of semantic memory include capital cities, dates, and historical facts. So if someone's able to state the capital of Poland, then that is semantic memory. That is memory of a fact. And that would be considered explicit memory. That's declarative or explicit memory. Now, with regards to episodic memory, episodic memory is autobiographical memory. So this type of memory is memories of personal experiences. It's associated with emotions. So a lot of times it's going to be the story of your life and each of those memories is going to have associated emotions. Some examples of episodic memory include graduation, first time driving a car, and your wedding day. So these are some examples of episodic memory and they're going to differ from semantic memory. And each of these has different particular systems that are utilized in the brain to remember them. And another difference between these two types of memory is that episodic memory, oftentimes you can remember the date and time of particular experiences. Whereas if you were to ask an individual when they learned the capital of a particular country, they may not be able to tell you that. So that is going to be differences in these types of memories. So that was explicit memory. Now let's talk about implicit memory. Implicit memory is non-declarative memory. And this type of memory is unconsciously recalled. So you may be wondering what I mean when I say implicit memory. So we'll see some examples here. So a type of implicit memory is procedural memory. So procedural memory is what we would call muscle memory. It's performing actions without conscious awareness. So procedural memory is a memory where an individual is able to perform the task after long periods of time. And some examples include riding a bicycle, driving a vehicle, playing the guitar, playing the piano. Those types of skills are procedural memory. So that is the difference with implicit memory, which is something that is not really consciously recalled. It's something that you can do after you haven't done it for a very long time. You don't really think about it. Whereas with explicit memory, it's something that it's consciously recalled and you oftentimes can state that information. So those are the different types of long-term memory. If you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.